ಸ್ಯೋನ್ಮೇಷನಿಮಿಷಾಭ್ಯಾಂ ಜಗದ ಪ್ರಳಯೋದಯ ಶಕ್ತಿಚಗ್ರವಿಭವ ಪ್ರಭವ ಶಂಕರ ಶಕ್ತಿಚಕ್ರವಿಭವ ಪ್ರಭವ ಶಂಕರ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಶಾಕ್ತೋಪಾಯ ಶಾಕ್ತ ಕಿಯರ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ದ ಪವರ್ so who is uh, who is fit for sadhana can be called shakta and as uh, the instruments of sadhana he has body mind prana intellect like all those so now how to train all this for a perfect sadhana that is what is discussed here so the sixth sutra said guru rupaya guru is the ultimate guidance for this sadhana so guru rupaya without guru nothing is possible so we have discussed sixth sutra now what would be the teaching of guru the first teaching so that is mentioned in this sutra madrika chakra sambodha madrika so this matrika chakra already we know this is the means of knowledge matrika all the words the sound or the scriptures what we learn from guru is called matrika chakra so as i said it should be detailed uh, you have to be uh, detail it to know what is this madhurga chakra is so here in this uh, shakta siddhanta they have all the mantras connected to this madhurga chakra so therefore uh, as i said the pronunciation of mantra and the tune of the mantra and everything is very important for this madhurga chakra dhyana therefore a special training is needed the correct for correct pronunciation so that is the difficult part uh, we face when uh, we join this sadhana later because already our uh, pronunciation system is formed in such a way its changing is would be very difficult so in our Ved- uh, vedic system they teach uh, children you know, like uh, age of 8 9 there they start pronouncing mantras like that so with this uh, mantra teaching so guru will give mantra diksha and then he will teach all those connected to the mantras that is called matrika chakra the chakra the powers the magical powers divine powers connected with this matrikas the alphabets of the letters of the mantras so what is believed is so when you uh, get this matrika mantras so we call matrika nyasa and lipinyasa aksharanyasa there are so many things so once we get all this like 50 letters in the sanskrit letters then uh, all other mantras whatever we chant do japa and do special sadhanas on those mantras will be uh, 
giving the energy directly it means you will be more connected and tuned with those mantras so the sadhana uh, will be easy after this matrika nyasa so when we learn uh, new mantras the guru first give this matrika mantra uh, connected to each mantra so then we have a anushthanam for like 40 days uh, 90 days anushthanam for this matrika nyasa and then after that the mantras are given then the sanskrit especially sanskrit pronunciation and then whatever we practice by that would be more beneficial that's what this is says therefore the first thing is matrika chakra sambodhana through this all the knowledge actually matrika is a, a basic knowledge of the mantras then the guru will give all the knowledge related to the mantra or the development of madhurga mantras <coughs> so when he gets this uh, madhurga mantra sambodhana the perfect knowledge or the correct knowledge of this madhurga mantra then uh, there is the second part which is called the uh, sankalpa sankalpa so after that uh, he will practice how to do sankalpa or what we say as bhavana no thinking about what you want or imagining about visualizing what you want so the visualization is a second part like uh, this uh, madhurga nyasa after this madhurga shaktis are achieved then visualization is uh, with this such shaktis so each word has a special shakti and that shakti that form of the shakti form of the power or form of the deity is visualized so it is a long process it takes a uh, longer time so then uh, in a, then the each deity each form of shakti has different times no the uh, some shakti should be meditated on like in the morning time some evening time some midnight or in different different times so these are all uh, the part of detailed sadhana so after that the mantra siddhi comes because mantra siddhi is not easy so the all purification step by step purification is necessary so first as i said correct pronunciation then having the guru's uh, blessings so the connection with the gurus what we call as shakti pada so there is some connection with the shakti pada is connecting with the guru so guru will connect you to the source of this powers so then mind uh, would be pure and uh, no uh, it will get more energy in that uh, for sadhana So then uh, continue with this matrika nyasa then the visualization the meditation on that and different kinds of pranayama that we will learn little bit uh, in next uh, part so different kinds of pranayama then meditations different kinds of meditation so all are thought uh, one by one so for such a sadhana sadhaka he says शरीरम सो आफ्टर गेटिंग द नॉलेज ऑफ दिस मातृका मातृका न्यासा द शरीर द बॉडी इज ऑफर्ड आज ऑब्लेशन इन द फायर ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस सो ही सरेंडर हिमसेल्फ or he sacrifices himself to the consciousness so now the individuality so individuality means he is not having a separate uh, uh, identity as iness all those so he identify himself with the deity and uh, through that to the all pervading consciousness the so sharira means body the body we have uh, three kinds of bodies physical body as gross body and then mental body as a subtle body and then 
the karana sharira the causal body so different level of mind the conscious mind subconscious mind and unconscious mind so the all these together become uh, an oblation for this sadhana so he will completely dedicate himself that is what he says so wherever this word havi like we have one uh, shloka in bhagavad gita we have famous shloka brahma arpanam brahma havi brahma agno brahma nahu so there also the same thing is uh, described the sadhaka or the meditator will offer everything to the brahman the all pervading consciousness so he try to identify himself in all forms like the uh, brahma arpanam brahma havi hi brahma agno so the fire is also brahman the obligate oblation is also brahman and the uh, uh sacrificer is also brahman sacrifice of also brahman so like that he will uh, dedicate himself surrender himself to this so this offering here uh, has a has different meaning so the first meaning that he is completely dedicated the physically mentally dedicated then the second meaning when he meditates he is not uh, uh keeping the individual personality as different from the all pervading consciousness so this is the ultimate uh, surrender so it means you know the uh, what do you say the reality of existence you know who are you so then we can do that like we we know this body is made out of five elements so we contemplate on five elements so there are meditations based on five elements and then we know this five five elements are uh, working because of consciousness so sat chit ananda the existence so then the second step or third step would be again with the existence so the pure existence so the uh, these are all bodies bodies in the sense it like uh, it is a form we meditate on like we when we say body here we you can see body is not meant as a body like we say you know a governing body governing body means uh, uh, together uh, the many are together and governing and doing something together is called a body so similarly here we have uh, this uh, Uh, body mind uh, combination uh, the body mind uh, complex for working it so that, that that is called as a body so wherever we uh, meditate on whichever object we meditate the meditator and the object meditated should be one that is the ultimate uh, form of meditation so this is uh, described in sharira havihi jnanam annam if uh, this sadhaka could uh, completely uh, dedicated as said in the previous sutra shariram havihi then the knowledge is food uh, now this knowledge is the knowledge uh, yanam bandha no the second sutra it came the same knowledge it is limited knowledge it's not the knowledge at all limited knowledge uh, the objective knowledge objective sensations of the mind those are called knowledge here so objective sensation when we take all the objective sensations are development of mind but they are the bondage to the individual soul so that jnanam so when we sit for meditation uh, we know if we have uh, our mind is working with more more and more information so the mind will bring one of another as i uh, gave an instance before if you take as an object in front of you if you know many things many 
many details about the object so you will remember all those at once so similarly this jnanam is uh, limited knowledge is to be swallowed annam it means to be eaten eaten up uh, so annam is you eat up all this knowledge the self knowledge is the food for highest satisfaction so the annam the word food you know here you, uh, you know the sutras when you see these sutras are made uh, uh, very simple but in a mystical way so the word used is something else and you have to take some other meaning so anna means when we eat uh, food we get satisfaction so the implied meaning so whenever we say uh, i eat food so it means you are satisfied that is what it means so that meaning is taken here uh, when this uh, limited knowledge or the mundane uh, experiences uh, goes away then the mind is satisfied so the those knowledge has eaten away so this meaning can be taken the highest satisfaction and the satisfaction starts from the lower level because you want to get the highest satisfaction uh, first we should enjoy the lowest lower level of satisfaction and start from there first we should know what is satisfaction means so you know, people do not understand what this satisfaction means and they they are happy but they don't understand what is happiness is so so similarly we have to understand what the satisfaction means how we get satisfied so when we think about that like we have a physical body we have uh, some satisfaction with the physical body and mental body so mental satisfaction and intellectual satisfaction when you Uh, have questions and queries uh, you get the, the answered the mind is the intellect is satisfied and ego satisfaction you want to respect love and all this so if somebody respects you love you and then you are satisfied okay i am fine so if you don't get uh, the food for eating if you get satisfied with this satisfaction so that is also a food actually uh, you can do that so uh, this uh, ego and intellect in different level it is satisfied so the food satisfaction is the starting point like uh, we are hungry we get food we are satisfied so this satisfaction is called uh, happiness so that is uh, discussed here so jnanam anna Uh, the knowledge of food this is the knowledge become a, become food for this person so you will eat up all the limited knowledge and then only the consciousness is there so the with consciousness he is one with the consciousness the steps of uh, sadhana now in this sadhana if you have too many different ideas different ideas different uh, uh, thoughts then the meditation won't happen for meditation we should have one thought clear thought definite thought so that anything you want to meditate we have many you know varieties of meditation if you know many types of meditation you can't practice any of them because when you start practicing you will remember the other it's, it's all confusing therefore we have a method when a new student comes the teacher will uh, ask the student what or you learned so he will describe i learned this line then all everything he, he should describe he should uh, tell a uh, guru whatever he learned so that uh, the guru can start the teaching from there so nowadays this is a problem because people have so many informations 
if you have a small query you immediately ask google and then get information and google will, will give various information about that so you are uh, when you go to a teacher you are too much informed so if you are too much informed actually teacher cannot help you correctly so we have to remove all this wrong information and uh, bring down to uh, drown the shishya the the student to teach a new thing so starting from basic uh, thing is necessary therefore meditation is not with much information uh, with less information and correct practice uh, that is why he says we have to remove all this jnana jnanam is there you are bound to con- be confused so uh, the basic thing as i said uh, how we meditate actually what our guru said meditation cannot be thought there is no established technique till today for really directly teaching meditation why the reason is the meditation is done or practiced in the mind body and outside elements only helps no sitting the posture and all those but the the student should get some idea how to start and that starting is also not starting actually you know uh, the starting uh, what the meditation means is changing the mind the changing is the mind is starting the meditation it means you are your mind is active in different different objects so we change the thought of the mind for be quiet so that is what the starting is so it means the even the uh, first step of meditation or starting the meditation is also not a start up all changing is so you are changing the position changing the thought and then bringing into the eyes. so the if guru uh, teaches like this then the student can take it so therefore uh, if uh, we learn when we learn meditation we should be careful with these things so very basic we start with the physical posture and then little bit prana and all those the changing the mind how you can change like if your mind feels sleepy so you want to change the mind we should know how to change it so like that so changing the mind is the first step or starting point of meditation so the all teaching goes like that and as uh, why why this is the reason the reason um, why it is because the consciousness or the atma as or true nature is always in quietude is always alone there is no changes so from atma side there is no need for meditation there is no meditation necessary for atma self because self is always in bliss existence and changeless now if that is the background so that is the uh, starting or that is the background where we are going to meditate now the next step from that point of view now who is making all these changes we have to meditate on that so after atma the self consequently the next uh, uh, acting uh, element is mind or intellect so we are doing all the meditation connected to mind and intellect and the prana of course prana is uh, but no prana is insentient prana is working like a no physical act it has nothing to do with that but this mind is half sentient and half insentient 
the reflection of consciousness as we learned in the last uh, part is there in the mind therefore mind is uh, active and mind become sentient so there this process happens so we are meditating on atma that's okay but the meditation is done or practiced in mind and intellect because they mind and intellect together makes all these problems so therefore he says jnanam annam so remove all the knowledge whatever you have and just be free the mind then with the mind you can do meditation the next sutra says the last sutra of the second part विद्या संहारे तदुत्थ स्वप्न दर्शन हाँ नौ से विद्या संहारे संहारा मीन्स डिस्ट्रक्शन और डिसअपियरेंस so when this knowledge what we discuss in the last cha- last sutra so that knowledge disappears so disappearance of that knowledge vidya samhare tadutha swapna darshanam so all what you learned or all what you remember or remembering would be seen as a dream you will be in like uh, after dream mood so you had a dream now you are out of dream then how you think about the dream the same experience it will come when we stop this mind in waking state like this so vidya samhare tadutha swapna darshanam the appearance of the dream the previous thoughts would appear like dreams so in dream after dream we know whatever we so and experienced in the dream is not real but you will have a slight memory of that or the after effect of that so this feeling would be there when we meditate and we know this knowledge whatever comes to our mind is not real this is an important point for a uh, good sadhaka that he should consider thought process as unreal it is not my personality it is only a function of my mind normally what we have the experience is whatever comes to our mind we take it as real therefore we take action on that react on that and uh, we believe whatever comes to our mind is giving us some uh, benefit some fruit so this uh, this uh, psychology this mental belief may cause this problems because if you believe in one thought and make it real it will not go away so you have to make it in some other way right to change it as i said you have to change it the first thing is that this is vidya samhare taduttha swapna darshanam so whatever we had experienced with those knowledges those informations now we believe in that if somebody ask did you study in colleges we believe in that we studied and we know all those you can ask question i will answer so it means whatever you studied we believe in that and uh, the life practice whatever we practice in our life we all learn from our parents we believe in that those are all correct so now 
with this how can you meditate how can you empty your mind this is not possible so therefore to know the reality of thoughts and objects outside is very important for this type of sadhanas and this sutra is uh, translated in two ways the first uh, as i said uh, when the when there is a lack of attention or disappearance of thoughts you feel whatever you learn as a dream this is one thing another thing is when a, when the common knowledge dissolves so this part of knowledge dissolves then by realization by knowing the uh, reality of those thoughts the previous objects of the world seems to be a dream so you are dreaming you know so uh, my consciousness my level of understanding is different i am seeing is this different this is one thing another thing as in, in the meditation when we meditate on an object so the thoughts will flow like you no know, one after another in relation with that object sometimes or sometimes uh, with another objects but we can uh, see all those thoughts as we dream them it is a dream so we let the thoughts come and flow we will be meditating you know these thoughts are just coming and flowing in front of me they have no connection with me so uh, in the state of meditation you can bring the dream there the dream experience so how we experience in the dream we know how we experience the dream so we, we contemplate on that and bring back those experience or the uh, slight memories of those experience then we can do this meditation this is another meaning of this sutta so that's in the practice oh, so in the meditation we teach this is so all a little higher level of meditation the so meditation what we learn from this uh, uh, yoga classes are not uh, this uh, level of meditation that just uh, be seeking and you know, contemplating on that there are so many techniques uh, but these are all as i said i saw all, all the different minds uh, and different thought process and different sadhaka can practice differently it's not one way of practice each sadhaka is different so therefore accordingly the uh, guru will accordingly guide the sadhaka he will understand how this person can meditate and then accordingly he teaches so by this sutra we end the second part shakto vaya now the third part comes as named as anava vaya anava anu means we know atoms atom is called anu it means very fine very tiny part is called anu so now this chitta here the chitta the this chitta the individual atma is called anu here the individual atma identified with chitta is called anu so anava vaya then it means it is uh, connected to individual atma so in relation with individual atma now whatever the atma word or anu word whatever we are discussing from here uh, with individual only now the first chapter was with the all pervading consciousness then in between the uh, trans uh, transmigration of thoughts from one level to another level it was discussed now the basic sadhanas will be discussed as i said pranayama dharana and some of those sadhanas will be discussed now we have this chitta chitta is a wonderful thing 
Chittahas Averti. As a thought process on intellect and mind and ego and memories and learnings and uh, sadhana, sadhyams and consciousness, everything. Uh, it is a uh, mantle of all this, called this chitta. And this chitta, the identification with chitta is individuality. Now if I say I am, I am speaking. So what does it mean? It means uh, I am speaking with my chitta. So I am identifying myself with my own chitta. So that chitta has all this. So I am remembering the words and pronouncing it, making an idea and pronouncing it. This is all happening. So my uh, identification with this individual atma is through chitta or we can call it chitta is called atma here. In modern science also we call that. What is Atma? What is the self? What is the person? What is the personality? This uh, mind only. Mind or uh, no. <coughs> so mind uh, is important than that way. Therefore it is called Anu. Anu, Anabhopaya. Though similarly the uh, first sutra comes. Atma Chittam Now you say the first sutra came Chaitanya Matma. You can see the difference. This is the difficulty with the sutra test books. Uh, no, if nowadays people read all this test book, they cannot get any because in one place it is said Chaitanya Matma and same word and same thing used in another place with another meaning. And the next sutra will also come Jnanam Bandha. So their second sutra was Jnanam Bandha. Here is our second sutra, Jnanam Bandha, but it is different. The meaning goes differently. So, uh, this is the difficulty or we can say this is the beauty of this sutra. We have to follow the test uh, with uh, preconceived ideas. So, first we conceive the idea, then read the sutra, then understand. That is how it happens. If you don't know anything about it, the sutra will give you nothing. So you have to have some background. So with that, the contents in the form of uh, words will give, communicate something. This is called, uh, there are uh, no, different uh, kinds of teaching. This is called Samadhi teaching, Samadhi Pratnya. Samadhi Pratnya, it means one who knows what is Samadhi. He knows what is Samadhi, so he can learn what is Samadhi and he can teach what is Samadhi. So if you don't know what is Samadhi is, you cannot learn Samadhi as a new subject. This is called Samadhi Pratna. It will talk from that level you, that you already gathered some information and you have some experience. Then you understand that. Uh, so, Atma Chittam. So, this self, the empirical self, the limited self, is Atma. Okay, that is the Atma here. Now, what, the, what is that? Chittam. So, what is empirical uh, self? The, uh, the empirical means what we, we experience as self, limited self. Because we have to separate now. And there we discussed about unlimited self. Chaitanya Matma. So the consciousness itself was self. But here it is Chitta. Why? Because the constitution of all Buddhi, Ahankara, Mana, Smritis and physical body and all our emotions. What our emotions are. Yeah. All multitude of all this is called Atma now. With this we are uh, now learning and we want to do, uh, we want to practice sadhana also with this atma. Therefore, it is defined here. So, this atma is called anava. For time being, we can uh, take this atma as anava, anu. So, atma chittam. Now, why he introduced this atma here? What was the need? 
uh, need, we can say it is a practical sense. If we don't accept what we are now, we cannot go further or we cannot improve ourselves. First, we have to accept our problems or our present existence, present feeling. Then, we can take uh, some new ideas or new uh, realms of uh, improving ourselves. Then we can uh, enlighten if we know the background of that. So without that is not possible. Sometimes, no, the student may be uh, already enlightened in some cases. It means the Shishya who is learning, he has all the experience, some previous experience. He understands all those. And now if he has already learned, already experienced some of this part, then he should start his sadhana further there, further uh, from that point. For him the basic sadhana is not necessary because he has already learned it, he has already that, those qualities, uh, inborn qualities that we can say, or with the, some means. There are uh, people like that, uh, from the childhood they have special qualities. So from there they should start. Therefore he is mentioning this here, the Sutrakara, Atma Chittam. So you take your chitta, then try to understand what this chitta means and what this chitta is going to do for you. From there we can uh, start. Jnanam bandhaha So this translator, he, he has not defined, uh, he has just said the, uh, the self is mine, that's all. So uh, he has not added anything from his side. So we can take the self is as mine, that's all. Now here the confusion will come, the same sutra is coming. Jnanam bandhaha, it's, he says knowledge is bondage. Huh. Now you see the atma chitta. We have a uh, method of understanding sutras. In Sanskrit it is said Sutra Anuvritti. Sutra Anuvritti. The continuity of sutra or some part of the sutra to nest sutras. It is called Anuvritti. The continuity or joining with some part we join with others. Why? Because sutra should be in a short form. So what is already said will not repeat in another sutra. So they have some formulas uh, how you find uh, which word should be taken to the next sutra and some words no, may be uh, taken for maybe for two, one chapter, two chapters. It will continue for the two chapters continuously, one word. So you will not find that word in another sutras. We have to go back to the sutra and take it. And for that, to, use, to make this sentence and connection of these sutras, connection of the sutras, you have to memorize all the sutras. No other way. If you don't remember the previous sutra, then we cannot connect the next sutra. This is the technique used in Vyakarma sutras. These people, they are all studying Vyakarma sutra, but they are not memorizing. Without memorizing, you cannot use Vyakarana Sutras, only you know the meaning. And some uh, sutras are totally different. It means uh, they communicate the idea completely. But most of the sutras, the 99% per, of the sutras, connected to the previous sutra or the sutra later. And then uh, they have uh, this uh, coordination techniques, where, where should be where we should take one sutra and after the second sutra, sometimes the first sutra is connected to the fifth sutra and the fifth sutra is connected to the eighth sutra and in between something is uh, missing or skipped. So there are so many things 
in that way. Now here, Jnanam Bandha, uh, the sut- for this sutra, we should bring the Atma Chittam from the Chittam should be continued here. So now, Chittam, the Jnanam connected to Chittam is Bandha. Okay. The bondage is the production of Buddhi. So now, now we know Chittam uh, is a complex uh, of all uh, Ahankara, Manas, Vritti and all this. So, the production of buddhi, ahankara, mana and all those is called the knowledge here that we learnt there. Now, the self as mind, body complex. So, this jnanam, with the chittam, he is uh, believing, he is considering, he is identifying himself as self. There it is, it was said the knowledge is bondage. The limited knowledge is not uh, useful for your sadhana because it is bondage. It has so many uh, problems because it brings uh, objects and emotions, all those. So you cannot uh, be one with the consciousness in that case. But here it is, the self as mind, mind as self. So this is the identification here. So the mind-body complex is called Chittam Atma. So that is the connection here. The Jnanam Bandhaha, the mind-body complex is believed to be his self, then you know the problem. If mind-body complex is self, if something happened to body, you will think, oh, I, ha- I, ha- I am, I have this problem, so I am, I have this problem, I am suffering from that. So the, all the sufferings of body, and the changes of body, the natural changes of body, will be considered as your own changes. So this is a big bondage. So this is what uh, said to be the normal behavioral or normal practice of life. If you ask anybody, you will only say a mind-body combination. You will only talk about that. And doctors know only that, that mind-body complex, psychophysical organism. Uh, so this is what they say. This is what the organism we are using it. So uh, this is why this we are doing sadhana. So therefore, when we talk about yoga, people bring this. Uh, what is yoga? What is the benefit of yoga? Mind-body complex, it will purify mind and body and give energy and all those benefits are connected to mind-body. When psychophysical organism is the self there, everything. So some uh, some sadhanas or some purifications or some uh, energizing practices for mind and some practices for body. This is called uh, sadhana or yoga or whatever. So therefore he is bringing into this uh, practice. Knowledge is bondage. (coughs) So now what is the problem if we see this mind and body as our self? Is there any problem? People say no. This is the life means. You are unnecessary talking something higher which is not useful. <laughs> so, if you know what is our, uh, uh, how the, my, how, how uh, my mind is working and how the body is uh, working, then I know everything. Everything about me. That is what it means. But the problem is, this is one level of understanding, the one level of consciousness. So, in this level, from this level, you cannot see the origin of life, which is much beyond this level. If you see from this level, you will not get any trace of the all-pervading consciousness. We will limit ourselves with this body-mind complex. So therefore, what is the connection with 
the other life you will not understand you will only understand your life and your body you will not understand the others life others feeling uh, emotions you will not understand for that one has to extend his consciousness his feeling of iness to other beings so therefore this is not the life what we mean if uh, one know this creation is from one consciousness whatever we see outside is created from one consciousness one reality one entity the cause of this creation is one then at least we have some uh, some idea or some way to think that everybody is connected correlated how we are all from one family we are all from one source of energy we are all from one cause so this is a higher thinking which can bring world peace the accepting others the existence of others with our own existence is something wonderful so uh, to know all these and when we talk about uh, emotions like love so when i talk about love i love who my love because who is uh, interested in me or who accept me uh, i love that person or that uh, thing and which is benefit uh, from which i have some benefits if you want to love all world the standard extensive uh, uh, world how we can do that only by this knowledge that all the beings sensual and insensual they are from the same source i am getting some benefit from all those beings if one can understand this he will love other beings when we see outside a tree is standing there if we don't know what help this tree is doing to us what is the benefit we get from this tree unless we don't know we will not love that tree if we know that we are getting fresh oxygen from this tree and the tree is eating the pollution the carbon dioxide so then we love that so this is the difference for limited self or limited identification we have a happy life in this world of course there is no no problem with that but we will not see the outside world and accept it so you can think about this this is that can you feel elaborately think you you know why this vedanta and all this uh, shiva sutras and they are all talking about all providing assistance the existence and happiness and life or consciousness is all providing it is it is universal so this this is the point he wants to teach in this sutra therefore uh, he is mentioning about the jnanam bandhah now just i mentioned about this creation there are so many things we should know from this creation and sometimes we are uh, completely confused with what is happening outside and in my when we see our mind mind is also confused confused in the sense mind is uh, working with uh, so many uncertain ideas which has no trace we don't know why it is and from uh, which uh, the which thought is connected to which thought and why it is coming and why we have these thoughts because there are so many hundreds of thoughts daily we are having 
without any purpose. There is no purpose. Just comes and does the problem. So why why it is happening? If mind is working for us, the modern science says mind is working for the body. Uh, body mind combination. So mind is working for the body. Body is working for the mind. They together work for each other. So if that is the case, then why mind brings out purposeless, useless, unnecessary thoughts? What is the need? So there is something hidden. So then this confusion comes. Why this thought came to me? It is not useful. So we want to get rid of those thoughts which are not useful for us. This is why nowadays people are going to learn meditation techniques. You know why they are doing. Therefore, they, are, they want to this. They want to do their work efficiently, more uh, no more but benefiting way. What you say? More productive. Now they say that word used. More productive. So when they see their mind, unnecessarily mind is working here and there, and there is no production, no benefit, no money is earned. So you want to concentrate the mind and bring to productive, the productive mind. So this is a trap, and this is a trick also. This is a trick. Uh, Inborn, it means inherent. It is there in the mind. Therefore, we learn all these things. At least we have some chance to learn all these things. So the God has put this uh, problem, this confusion in the mind, inherent. So you bring with us. Even a child has all these problems. So now the next sutra is talking about that. This is what the uh, all creation means, the Maya, how it works. So we will take up the sutra tomorrow. Om Purnamadha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudashyade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevavasishyate Om Shanti 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 Shanti